Have you ever wanted to create a machine learning dashboard in Factorio? That sentence doesn't even make sense. But think of all the actionable insights that artificial intelligence could give you. We could start a business in Factorio by feeding customers big data into ChatGPT to drive NFTs and decentralized distributed ledgers trained on a DAX through open source Web3 APIs. Think of the value, disruption. Factorio was made for this. We're going to okay. start with what I call Back comedy up. or suit. Let's talk yeah, about what I'm not talking about. Machine learning is a broad topic that can mean many different things, and there are already some incredible projects that focus on Factorio. A paper titled The Factory Must Grow Colon, Automation in Factorio, written by these people, compares different meta heuristics, including simulated annealing, genetic programming, and evolutionary reinforcement learning to solve optimization problems with constraints and game spaces of up to 12 by 12 tiles operating on matrices derived from game states. <gasps> don't worry, I don't fully understand that either. They claim to have developed an interface allowing optimizers in any programming language to interact with Factorio, which is pretty cool. They also call Factorio an untapped suite of research problems, and I can't wait for the first Factorio article on biters to be printed in nature. This paper and other methods of training a model to play the game for you are awesome, but not what I'm talking about. Let's take a second to appreciate another thing. Yes, that is the Darude Sandstorm music video on Factorio Lights. Anyway, there's this contraption made by this person that plays a game called Gamoku. I'm unfamiliar with this game, but the Wikipedia article mentions that players take turns placing stones on a grid until one player achieves a particular board state that is a win condition similar to the board game Go. This process of developing a model in Factorio to play a different game is closer, but still not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is using machine learning to handle logistics in Factorio like it was a business that needed to forecast costs and profits for the next quarter. In this case, the costs are iron ore, and the profits are iron plates. Counts of both resources are stored in a memory stack that store the amount of resources we process in the last period of time. Thank you, Dosh. All of these identical combinators are simply timing the updates in the memory stacks, although they look redundant, they are necessary. Yarr. I set our period of time to 10 seconds, and we are storing four values for each resource. We can build some simple aggregates for both resources by averaging the four values, creating the rolling 40 second average of iron ore and iron plates our factory consumes and produces respectively. Most people just stop here and use the aggregates, and this works well. If you know that the two values are related to each other. We could just as easily get the rolling 40 second average value of copper ore and get a rate of copper ore to iron plates. But these two resources should be independent, so we'd be left staring at a useless number. We need some way to calculate our confidence that the two values are related. This requires us to use a model or a function that converts inputs to an output. In this case, our input is iron ore and our output is iron plates. The simplest model I know of is called linear regression, but this is still an order of magnitude more complicated than what we have right now. Linear regression naturally requires linear algebra, a mystical, multidimensional transformational tool that is often just a compact way of arranging many multiplication and addition operations. Keyword here is transformation, as remember we are transforming our inputs to outputs. For all you nerds, I have spelled out the variables and equations and text plates. Honestly, they look a lot more complicated than the combinators that actually carry out the logic. Personally, I have a preference for every expression of math. Graphing, programming, even combinators. Everything except equations. But I can't deny their ability to compress complicated rules into a small enough space to fit on the screen. Like I said before, these are just ways of ordering multiplication and addition to create the model. In simple linear regression, we use inputs from one variable we call x to predict a value from another variable we call y using a line of best fit. In other words, a line that minimizes the sum of the squared vertical distances between each point and the line. We can express this with only two variables. The y-intercept of the line, usually called b0 or beta0, and the slope of the line, usually called beta1. In general, I care more about the slope because this will tell me the direction and the strength of the relationship between the two variables. So far, we've really only created a fancy version of the rolling averages we calculated earlier. There are two values that our model creates that measure the confidence that we are looking for. The correlation coefficient, r, Yarr. and the coefficient of determination, r squared. These are really the same value repackaged, but loosely speaking, R is used to show how related two variables are, while R squared represents how much of the variables on the input side determine our output. There's a lot more to say about these values, but our Factorio business leaders have already tuned out, and we don't have time to focus on critical details.
what you're looking at is the most effective tool in our toolbox. The dashboard. Like all good dashboards, we have an important sounding name, a graph, and some colorful values that update in real time. On the right, I've ported the values I described earlier and converted them to business-friendly language. Slope and confidence. Iron per ore is the same as the slope, and confidence is just our R-squared value. I made confidence a number between 0 and 100, as this is the only format that our business users understand. I've made this value turn green when it's a good value, and red when it's a bad value. And just like that, we've manufactured the most important resource of all. Fire. As for the graph, it's set up to show the current level of iron ore and plates in this big pixel and uses the model coefficients to predict the next three values of iron plates if our iron ore usage grew by the next three logical amounts. These X and Y axes scale independently with our current value of ore and plates, so if we were using 6 iron ore, we would predict the number of 4, 7, 8, and 9 iron ore, but if we were using 60 iron ore, then we would predict the number of plates for 70, 80, and 90 iron ore. Here is the cool part. I have two setups I want to test. One where these infinite belts of iron ore and plates moving out of these boxes are counted on our 10 second basis, and one where we have a train that periodically drops off iron ore, which gets smelted and stuff into this box, and gets counted on our 10 second basis. In the first setup, if I turn off the iron ore, the iron plates continue flowing because they are independent of, and therefore not related to, the iron ore. Consequently, modeling iron ore's effect on iron plates should produce a low confidence measurement. As a side note, I'm also counting these inserters to create a small random variation in our measurements, otherwise we measure exactly the same value every 10 seconds and everything breaks, but don't worry too much about this. And looking at our dashboard, we display a consistently low confidence measurement and a fairly volatile and unreliable graph as we would expect. With the furnaces, however, if we turn off the iron ore train, then we are also effectively turning off the iron plates from our furnaces. In this case, iron plates are dependent on iron ore and therefore should give us a high confidence number. And would you believe it, our confidence is relatively high, and we also have a fairly consistent slope estimate. I can't tell you how excited I was when this actually worked. But uh, you may have noticed something. Our slope prediction is kind of dog shit. I'm using the Crastorio 2 mod, so one iron plate takes five iron ore to make, therefore the true slope value is 0.2. We're not actually that far off, but we have a high confidence for values anywhere between 0.2 and 0.6. This might not sound like a lot, but another way to put it is that we have a high confidence with values that are up to three times higher than the true value. This inaccuracy is happening for a few reasons. If you guessed that productivity modules were one of them, give yourself a pat on the back. You're, uh, you're wrong. I'm only using speed modules. But that's such a good guess and could definitely cause this. The first issue is that the train drops off ore on a 45 second cycle, around 15 seconds of which there is no ore or plates being counted. Our measurements are still being collected on 10 second increments, however, this means we'll end up recording entire 10 second increments with no ore or plates. To add to this, the time it takes to transport and smelt iron ore into iron plates also creates a lag time between ore and plate measurements, meaning that it is possible to measure 10 seconds with zero ore but a positive value for plates. Both of these factors lead to an inflated prediction for our slope. This can actually be fixed by increasing the time between measurements to be greater than 45 seconds. Increasing the time of measurements also aligns better with how Factorio is played. You probably care more about the iron per 15 minutes than iron per 10 seconds. The last issue is that we are only using four data points. Increasing the number of data points or samples we are basing our model off of would help it be more representative of the actual underlying orb smelting process, creating more accurate predictions. However, each additional data point we add requires five more combinators for multiplying our ore and plate matrices and 12 more combinators for the stack memory. Now you know why we're only working with four data points. There is also a shiny elephant in the room that has been shining shinily that I should address. Factorio is a game with very, very little uncertainty. Linear regression and machine learning more broadly are tools specifically designed for and actually require high uncertainty to work correctly. This is basically the most over-engineered way of saying if you mine more iron, you will smelt more iron. You can also calculate this number exactly. No error, no damaged products, no shipping errors. It's literally just multiply the average productivity by the amount of ore left in the mine. You have all the tools at your disposal. This dashboard is total overkill. <clears throat> that is, except for one source of uncertainty, your teammates.
Yep, you can set this up specifically to be the most toxic person possible. Just look for unexpected drops in the relationship between variables and you can start blaming other people for uh, anything. Just two Combinator connections and Big Brother is online and ready to put your friends in jail. The dashboard sees all. So congrats, you've started a business and discovered you're actually the FBI. That's, uh, that's all.